music and they're like, they didn't even know, you know, they're like, oh, we have this Blue Hedgehog thing, maybe it'll go somewhere. Uh, but they just, they, the guy who wrote the music, what was his name? Thank you, I don't know how to pronounce it, but good gold stars for you. Um, but, but as you know, like he has the, like, like Wikipedia the dude, right? I mean, he's like the shit out in, over in Japan. And so Sega didn't even own the rights to the music. So um, when I, to the original music. So when I went to, uh, when I was doing video games live for the first time, I went to my friends at Sega and I said, hey, we want to do like a sonic, uh, you know, a, a sonic melody of like the first game. And they're like, I, we can give you rights for the video, the images, but we don't own the music. Uh, and so I had to go to that dude's people and, uh, and get approval to, to work on the score to get it in the show. But um, So now here's, here's something cool. So I was really close with the, uh, the Sega folks back in the early 90s uh, up in San Francisco. Um, their office is up there. Actually, it wasn't, what was it? it wasn't even in San Francisco at the time. It was Redwood City. And, um, and so we would go there, and they had a, they had a really amazing uh, studio, and I was friends with, with the music department there, and uh, Spencer Nielsen, who was running the joint. And even before him, David Havalosa and Mark Miller were like the two guys who kind of started the first uh, U.S. Sega division of music. And um, so they... They told me a story, uh, and so this is second hand, but it's from a good source, because they always said, you know, I remember getting a call uh, from one of my friends up there, and he says, oh my God, you're never gonna believe who's here right now. I said, who? He said, Michael Jackson. I said, really? He said, yeah, he's a big fan of the games, and we're giving him a studio tour. I'm like, oh wow, that's pretty cool. And this was like, I wanna say 91 or 92, and, um, Anyway, a year or so later, I, I saw him at, uh, actually it wasn't even called E3 back then, it was, uh, it was CES, which is a big show now in, uh, in, in Vegas, still in January in Las Vegas, but during the time, that's where the video games were part of CES, and they'd have it either in Vegas or Atlanta or Chicago, and they'd have it twice a year. So I remember bumping into him in Vegas at CES, my buddy, and, uh, and we were talking about the whole Michael Jackson thing, and he, he told me, he confirmed, he says, Michael Jackson is working on the music to Sonic the Hedgehog. I said, really? Holy shit. I think, well, I think it was, what, Sonic 3, I think it was, yeah. And um, I'm like, wow, that's crazy. So I, every time, you know, every couple months or whatever, we'd, we'd get together, or, you know, phone calls or whatever, and I'd always ask him, oh, man, how's it going with Michael Jackson? Yeah, it's great. So, um, so... I don't know if it was ever confirmed or not, but I, but I can tell you that he did do the music for Sonic 3, and he made, he made Sega take his name off the cartridge at the end because he was, and this is what my audio guy who was working with him told me, he said he was really bummed about the way his music was sounding on the Genesis. Because he didn't, you know, he was, he, and that's why he wanted to take his name off it, um, was because he wasn't, happy and satisfied with with the sound and he was like he thought I, I guess he thought it could do more or something I, I don't know but anyway that's kind of a cool sonic michael jackson story it is confirmed um the uh from the people who are there uh second hand uh so uh when i did uh so when i did video games live um, i'm on the, i'm on the uh board of advisors for the Game Developers Conference. Uh, I've been on the Board of Advisors for 20 years. And one of the initiatives we wanted to do about uh, maybe 15 years ago was we wanted to get the Japanese to, uh, to really be involved with GDC as well. Because when it, GDC, Game Developers Conference, first started out, it was like about, you know, a thousand of us in a hotel in, in San Jose just talking about video games or whatever. Oh, it was really starting to blow up and you know he said we, we want to get some people over and they said well let's make a list of people who we want to invite over to GDC and I'm okay you know I had worked with Shigeru Miyamoto on uh, Metroid uh, Metroid Prime so I, uh, I said well we gotta get Miyamoto and let's get over Yuji Naka and uh, and um, you know we had a, we had just had a, 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 the list the greatest you know list 
the guy who uh, created Pac-Man and the guy who created Space Invaders and all these dudes. And so, to their credit, like every one of them came over. So that was the first time uh, I met, oh, and Yu Suzuki, of course. Uh, that was the first time that I had met um, Yuji Naka. And um, I had asked him at the time, because I had the concept of Video Games Live was in my head. I created Video Games Live 13 years ago. And, uh, and so this is like maybe about a year or two before I uh, launched it. And, uh, and so I told him, so I stayed in contact with him and I said, look, I, you know, I'm going to have this big show. We're going to do it at the Hollywood Bowl. It's going to be the first time ever that this has ever happened. And it was the very first time ever that the sonic music had ever been performed live. Not even in Japan had they performed the music to Sonic the Hedgehog, which I thought was insanely crazy. Like, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, really? But a lot of the reason was they couldn't get the rights from the rock star dude. And so, um, and so I said, look, if we're going to do the world premiere of the Sonic music, we're going to do it at the Hollywood Bowl with the L.A. Phil, 200 musicians on stage, you got to be there. So, uh, so Sega arranged the whole thing, and uh, we, when we did our first show at the Hollywood Bowl... Uh, with 200 musicians from the L.A. Phil on stage. Uh, Nakasan was, came out, and he did the meet and greet with everyone. I mean, we had everybody there. We had, uh, I mean, just, you know, Hideo Kojima had flown out. And, I mean, everybody was there. It was cool. And, uh, and he came out on stage. And I'm, I'm so bummed, though. Like, when the concert happened, YouTube wasn't really a thing. And so there's, I don't think there's any footage on YouTube that, uh, that exists of Yuji Naka on stage with us. Uh, there might be, but I don't, I don't think so. But YouTube wasn't a thing back then. Uh, now, I mean, if you put in video games live in YouTube, you'll get 60,000 videos back. Because I tell people to, hey, promote it. You know, I, I don't care. We're, we're videotape it. Just please put it on Facebook and YouTube for us. Um, so, uh, but anyway, I, I know there were... All, cameras in the audience, so I'm sure someday some stuff will surface with uh, Yuji Knock on stage, it'd be cool, but I know there's stuff out there that exists of the first performance, I just don't know if Yuji Knock was part of it. Um, and so that's really cool, so I worked with uh, Richard Jakes, who is another composer with me uh, when we worked on the Sonic games together. And so Richard had always done a lot of stuff for Sega. And he had done, like, the remake of OutRun and stuff. And so when we were doing the Video Games Live arrangement, I, I put the arrangement together. And I basically wanted it to be all of the levels of the first Sonic game. Um, because they were all so iconic and they were all so amazing. And this was during a time, like, in the early 2000s when the Sonic franchise kind of... I'm going to say this nicely... Uh, <laughs> kind of hit a little bit of a rut. Oh, yeah. A little bit of a rut, you know? And so I, so I really wanted to go to the original and really, like, bring back, like,